Hi guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I'll be continuing my series of sharing with you all the completed pages I have coloured um, since I started adult colouring and today will be the Hannah Carlson video. And um, I haven't coloured in her books very recently. I guess um, the book collection is growing the time is reducing and so I'm not getting around to all my books as much but I love Hannah Carlson's work. Um, I got one of her books quite early on in my colouring so it's quite a shame that I haven't coloured in it as much as I used to at the beginning of my colouring but it's bound to happen with the number of books um, we tend to start uh, piling up as we go. Um, so yeah I think I'll start with her new series. I've only got three of her books from the new series. I haven't got um city uh, tales from the city among the stars and i haven't got atlant uh, tales from atlantis yet tales from atlantis i will definitely be getting tales from the city among the stars i'm still thinking about it not 100 percent sure yet um because it wasn't entirely my cup of tea i do enjoy hannah carlson's older books um a little bit more than her newer books but um her work is outstanding and i every time i color her work i do enjoy myself um, so yeah, let's get started with the newer books because, or the newer series because, um, yeah, I have fewer pages to show you guys in these books. So the first one I have is Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Midnight Masquerade. Before I go ahead, sorry, um, any uh, illustrations that I say or any completed pages I say I have a full colour along on, I will have separate playlists for every single book that I share. And so any colour along will be within that book's title. And um, the mediums I use are Faber-Castell Albert Dura pencils pretty much all the time. I use Tombow Jewel brush pens and I use uh, sometimes soft pastels and distressing. So I'll share with you if there is any differences or any materials I've used in addition to my Faber-Castell Albert Dura pencils. But pretty much majority of the pages will have been colored by the Albert Dura pencils. Just so that I don't have to repeat myself in every page. All right. Let's get started. Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Midnight Mas Masquerade. And um, I, I, this is not my favorite from her new series of books, but I've only done one page in it. I do like it. I will get round to it, uh, you know, eventually again. Uh, but like I said, so many illustrations to color, so many Hannah Carlson illustrations to color with all the books that she has that I'm not getting round to them as often. But this is a page I've done. Um, and I think it was quite... Er I don't remember when this book came out, but basically I think I did this in 2022. So I did the background with Distress Ink and I did I did use Tombow Jewel brush pens and then I went over with my pencils, um, Arbiter pencils dry. I've got a little bit of sprinkling of Arteza metallic watercolour paints and some metallic gel pens, Sakura metallic gel pens in this particular play, uh, page. And um, yeah, that's it. I think I have a how I color video and I'm trying to remember what it is. I don't know if it was the background um, or whether it was coloring clothing. I think it might be the background, but um, again, any videos I say is a how I color video. I have a playlist of how I color videos, so you can check it out there and you'll find out which video it was. But I do feel like I did a how I color video on this. I just can't remember what it was, uh, which is a shame. But um, it was a couple of years ago. This is the only page I've done in this particular book, Tales from the Midnight Masquerade by Hannah Carlson. I am a slow colorist, so it does take me a while to, first of all, pick a page, then to get started on the page, and then to actually color the page as well. So it does take me a while. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't have that many colored pages in her new books. All right, Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Forest Kingdom. I think, was this the second book? This is my favorite book. I do really, really like this book. I love the illustrations. I love the theme of this particular book. Um, and I've done two or three pages in here. I haven't marked them, guys. It would have take me, taken me ages to mark all the pages. So bear with me if I'm just flipping through. All right. So this was, I think, the one of the first pages I did in this particular book. And I have got a How I Color video on How I Color Glass. And... Um, the background with distress inks as well. So I did share how I did the background with distress inks. So it will be in the how I color 
a playlist. Um, but yeah, the pencil work is my albertures. Again, I've done a sprinkling of Arteza metallic watercolour paints and I've also used Windsor and Newton white ink. I really enjoyed this page actually and I think this is one of the first pages where I used the method of using drawing gum to block out the line art that you don't want your distressing to come onto and then doing the distressing work which is really fast then and then um, erasing off that drawing gum and then going in with the pencil so I think that's the first time one of the first times I used that method and I think I show that or definitely show that on the how I color video on distressing backgrounds then this is another page and I absolutely love this page because of the colors. It's just um, so different for me, especially for the background. And I used, yeah, distress inks and I did the sprinkling effect, um, the water splash, sorry, effect. And uh, it didn't go through, wrinkled the paper a little bit, but it didn't go through. And then I used my Albert Dura pencils. I may have used, yes, Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing as well. And, uh, Tuli are paint pens for um, covering up some black lines like on those leaves um, and that's it yeah really like it um, I really like this page actually the background of it and I've reproduced this one in a color along I did oh no I've got a how I color video for the background specifically um, in a Melpa Many Chattapanag YouTube book the uh, Enchanted Earth book so the background I've sort of tried to reproduce in that particular page and I share it with you guys in the How I Colour video. And I think I've only done one other page, which is this one. And this was an experiment. So I did the background with Neo Colour 2s actually. But before I did that, I did add in these flowers here. So I think I got these flowers from a different page, maybe in the same book. And I used the tracing method. I have a how I color video on the tracing method. I used to add elements to a page. I can't draw. And so when I want to add elements, usually I will trace and then add it in. I'm trying to see if it was from this. I know it's a Hannah Carlson book because that's her style of flowers. But I don't know if it was specifically this book or a different book. But basically I traced it. From one of her illustrations and then transferred it to this particular illustrations on the sides just playing around really just trying something new um so yeah i then basically transferred it onto here and i colored it in the uh the line art is done with tombow jewel brush pens and my pencils um sprinkling of windsor and newton white ink but yeah, I enjoyed doing that. I'm not so sure it works for this page. I don't think it really needed it. Um, I feel like the background is quite too vibrant for this page. I don't think this page doesn't look very cohesive to me, basically. I love the main illustration, but I don't feel all the background works with it. That's the thing, yeah. But I really like how the portrait turned out, the bunnies turned out, the colours I chose. Um, I haven't done a Hannah Carlson portrait for a long time I should really try and get one done again but um, yeah I don't think it's cohesive enough but it was fun experimenting and I think that's the only page yeah I've done I just flipped through it one time so that was Tales from the Forest Kingdom by Hannah Carlson then the next one I have is Tales from the Witch's Cottage by Hannah Carlson and I think I've only done a couple of pages again in this particular book. You'd think I'd be a lot quicker at cover, uh, you know, filling up the pages because they're smaller pages but um, yeah, I'm not getting around to these books. Yeah, that one. I really like how this page turned out actually. And this is a full colour along on the channel. I used distressing for the background using drawing gum to cover line art where I didn't want the dark um, distressing to get onto. And then I used Tombow Jewel brush pen, a combination of Tombow Jewel brush pens and Thule Art paint pens for basing. Um, yes, I used the paint pens to base all these small flowers because I knew I wanted to cover up the line art and they're so tiny that it would be hard to cover up the line art later without making it look messy. So I did use Thule Art paint pens for basing and then I used my pencils over the top. I also used Thule Art paint pens for um, covering up black lines. I did the sprinkling of Windsor and Newton ink. I tried to cover up the bottom half. I just wanted it on the top part. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Did I use, yeah, a little bit of glitter gel pen. 
um, here and there. Really like how that turned out. And I, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, there is a full color along on the channel for that one. So it'll be under the title of this, this a playlist with the uh, under this book's title. All right, then this page um, I did with Derwent Inktense pencils. The hair and the skin is done with my Faber Castell Arbor Dura pencils, but everything else is done with Derwent Ink Tens. I can't remember the background either. I use Neo Color Twos or my Arbor Dura pencils because this is one of the first times I was using Derwent Ink Tens, and I wasn't so sure whether I, whether I knew how to use them very well yet, whether I'd be able to pull it off for a big background, and so I didn't use it for the background on this page, but um, I use it for all the other work. And I didn't go over with pencils on this particular page. I just left it with the Derwent Ink Tense. It's so vibrant. That's the difference between the watercolor pencils and Ink Tense pencils because Ink Tense pencils are ink. They're not basically watercolor. And so they don't get diluted when you activate them with water. They get vibrant and you don't usually need to add pencil over the top. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed coloring that page, actually. Um, it was just a random page I picked for easy colouring and just to play with the Derwent Ink Tents and I really enjoyed it. Um, and that's it, maybe a little bit of glitter gel pens on the bubbles, but that's it. And that's all I've done in this book, Tale from the Witch's Cottage by Hannah Carlson. All right, then I have... Okay, now these are the older books, uh, Hannah Carlson's older series of books and I have all of them other than the compilation book, which is Goldcorn. I can't remember the English, um, the English name, but um, yeah, I don't have the compilation books. I, I know that she had a few new pages in that book, but then the rest were basically taken from all the um, six books from her first series. And I don't usually get repeat books or I try to avoid having repeat illustrations. And so, um, yeah, I didn't get that book, but um, you never know if I ever finish one of these books, it may, may eventually get it, but that will be, yeah, many years from now. All right, so let's start. Hannah Carlson's Daydreams. And this was her first book, but it's not the first book I got. Um, so I've done this page. This was the first page I did in this book. I've done the background with my Arbordura pencils activated with water and then all the pencil work with um, Arbordura's and I think I based the green elements with Tombow dual brush pen. I don't do very uh, such limited colour palettes that often now I, I really need to I think I need to get back into Hannah Carlson's books because I used to like experimenting in her books I don't know why but her illustrations always made me sort of um, go outside my comfort zone and so I really need to get back into her books. But yeah, I've done that one, really like that. I love the color combination. And then, yes, I remember this page. Um, okay, so this one, um, I did the background with Arteza metallic watercolor paints, which, which I think is nice. I think I've seen a lot of people do shiny backgrounds and they look beautiful. This is the first time I tried it. I didn't have any other watercolor paints at the time. I only had the metallic set and I wanted to just play around with watercolor paints. And um, so I went ahead and used the metallic ones. And I think it works on the page. Um, I'm not so sure the colors I used, uh, the yellows I used work that great, but um, the thing that I found hard was doing the background and then when I when I have such a strong light and the, the background is shining into my eyes while I'm colouring, I really struggled with that. Um, I don't know why, maybe I use a very bright light, I really need it, but I, I use a very bright light um, or what it is, but it was actually quite disturbing to my eyes while I was colouring. Now when I look at it, I like the shiny background, but I remember struggling colouring because I was just like, okay, I need to angle my head in a way that it doesn't shine into my eyes while I'm trying to colour. Um, so yeah, it was quite an interesting experience uh, for me. I've not done another um, full metallic watercolour background. I should try, see if it works second time around, but yeah. And then the pencil work is my Albert Juris. Yes, this was quite an early page as well. 
really enjoyed it and I did the background with my Albert Dura pencils and then activated with water. I used a lot of Tombow Jewel brush pens and I used the pencils over the top. Um, did I use any glitter gel pen? I used a lot of white. I, this is not Windsor & Newton white ink. I used Posca white pen to do all those dots. I probably didn't have Windsor & Newton white ink at the time. Um, I feel like I got inspiration for this page. When was this? 2021. So quite early in my colouring. I think I got inspiration for this page from... Um, Oh, why, why, why has it skipped my mind? She does a lot of journaling and collaging and she's she's an artist, basically. Why can't I remember? Uh, it's, it's just gone out of my mind at the moment. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box below or up on the screen if I remember to. Um, but I, I remember her doing, I think, this particular page and her explaining, I think she might have been using Coloria water based markers from what I can remember and she was just trying to explain like the light shining and things like that so it's really going to bug me um but yeah I I'll try and remember to put it in the description uh, up on the screen um but yeah I'm sure I got a few tips and hints and well a lot of tips and hints from from all the explanations she was going doing she usually does live videos i don't think she ever records videos so i'm sure you guys know who i'm talking about and if you do just shout it at me in the comments below um but yeah she always does live videos very regularly probably every week she used to do it i don't know if she still does i don't get as much time to watch uh videos so i i don't usually follow but i i know she does live videos um but not just on coloring but yeah, so she had so many good tips about the light sourcing and how to make, you know, one side of the these leaves or it looks like seaweed to me, but it's not um, brighter than the other side because of the light source being there. And then I'm sure with the reflections and all, I got that uh, um, the hints from the tips from her as well. Um, so, yeah, that page. All right, and then I have this page. I actually really love this page, but it was a disaster at the beginning. I don't know if some of you will remember. Um, I had tried to do a, I think a bouquet background. I, I don't remember what, you know, when this was, but I remember getting really frustrated. Um, I just wanted to color. Maybe I was going, I was stressed out or I was tired or something and I decided to do a bouquet background, which I did not know how to do in that sort of a mood. And I started somewhere in the corner up there and um, it just wasn't working. I did not know what I was doing. So then I just went ahead and blacked out the whole background. And then I colored the foreground, loved the colors I chose, love how it turned out. And then I went ahead and did a lot of, I think it looks like Sakura, no, um, Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallic for me, uh, the gold, in gold. And I just went crazy with that pen on the background and I love how it turned out in the end. So I covered up the mess I had made. I don't even remember what colors I was trying to use for the background. Um, I used acrylic um, paint to, to cover up the background and that's when I bought I never had acrylic paint but when I messed up this page I was like okay I need to sort it out and I bought acrylic paint specifically for this page just the black um to cover it up so I'm glad I salvaged this page because I absolutely love it every time I turn to it I'm like how did I do that I know it happened after I messed up the page but I probably can't reproduce it now but yeah I never really do a lot of black backgrounds um I don't know why I should try because it really pop, makes the colors you use pop up off the page um but yeah so that page and then i think if i'm not mistaken that is all i have in this book i know this book is a favorite for many people i think a lot of people are trying to finish this book i've heard on youtube videos previously um this is probably not my favorite of the first series but um yeah, I think that's all the pages I've done in this book. So Hannah Carlson's Daydreams. All right. Next one I have is Hannah Carlson's Summer Nights. And again, I don't have that many pages in this book. Yeah, this one. Um, this one I had 
Oh yeah, I started playing with uh, watercolour paints. So I did the background with watercolour paints instead of my Albrecht Durer pencils. I did basing of the door and the floor and stairs with the watercolour paint and then I went over with the pencils. Um, and then the rest of the work is just uh, Albrecht Durer's and uh, Posca white pen, some glitter gel pen and that's it. So that's when I started getting that urge to want to play around with watercolour paints. Um, I like it. I like the colour combination. This one was quite an early one. This one was actually my very first body colour ever. Um, I don't do body colours that often because I'm so slow. Uh, I have limited time. And so, um, yeah, when when um, when I was asked to do this body colour, it was with someone on Instagram back in 2021. Um, so, yeah, I remember this definitely as my first um body color and it was a double page spread but um i did the background with soft pastels but then i went over with some pencils to deepen up the the, the border i like how i did that and not just cover the entire background with color and uh, then i worked with tom Baudrill brush pens and my pencils and um i've used some metallic pens um, I've used Posca white pen. I've done a bit of sprinkling of Windsor and Newton white ink, very little, just to give a bit of highlights. And that's it. Yeah, I like it. I like the color combinations. It's nice to see a double page spread done, a Hannah Carl's on double page spread done. All right, then hopefully there's more to show you in this book. Yeah, this one. Oh, this one was a very early one. Um, I use Distress Ink for the background. My Distress Ink is very different now. So if I just show you back to this one, um, I think I've got a bit more of a hang with my Distress Ink. I wasn't blending it very well here. It just looks a bit incomplete to me. Um, but yeah, I think now I'm a bit bolder with my color choices and my blending and I just go for it and I keep layering until I get an intense background. I know distressing should also be, can also be quite subtle, but um, yeah, the blending I don't think was very good and it just looks a bit incomplete, the background. Um, but I love the rest of it. Trying to do black feathers, I was gonna say fur, but feather effect or, you know. Um, my gold has not changed that much since then. I uh, love those flowers, but yeah, that's it. And a bit of metallic gel pens. It was a nice page, but you can tell it was quite early in my coloring. And then this page, this is my Cadbury castle because of the gold and the, the purple. <laughs> it's my Cadbury castle. And I did distressing for the background with the water splash effect and sprinkling of Arteza metallic watercolour paint and then I did my Arbor pencils and oh yeah I covered up the lines um, of the water with Windsor & Newton white ink before I coloured it um, and I did the water splash effect with uh, Posca so I just used a bit of Posca and then I used my finger to sort of uh, smudge it and make it look like the waves were crashing on the castle I really like that um, like I said, Anna Carlson's illustrations does make me want to try and experiment and play around. Um, so yeah, I really liked that page. I remember really loving that one. I love the purple building. And then I think the other page I had. Earlier in my colouring, I was a bit braver um, taking on double page spreads. Nowadays, I don't take them on as much. But I did this page again, very early work. You can tell with the distressing background again, uh, with the water splash effect, um, not bl blended as well. Again, at this point, I was not using drawing gum to cover up the line art, but I was managing to actually get pretty close to the line art. Um, but you can see a little halo of white, which is the difference. If I use drawing gum, I can get right up to the feathers. Whereas when I don't, I tend to get a bit of a halo around my uh, line art. Um, this was probably for a colour along in Instagram by at Norma Colouring for uh, probably black hair and blue lips or maybe blue lips. I can't remember, but definitely something like that because 
it would not be in my uh, my creativeness does not extend to being very quite quite unconventional so i wouldn't have gone for blue lipstick otherwise um so it, it's really nice taking on some of these uh color alongs on instagram it really does uh, make you think outside the box and try something new so i love doing that sometimes i used to do it a lot more before because i had more time and i do a lot of color alongs on instagram but now it's like okay I'll try and pick pages that I feel like coloring and then if, if they match up to a color along, I do it. But before I used to pick my pages according to color alongs, but I don't have as much time now um, because sometimes I don't get around to finishing them. So, yeah. And then I use metallic gel pen um, as well for the dots and the stars. I like it. I colored over, I colored uh, the skin uh, over the tattoo or the the line art of the flowers on the skin and then I went over with the black uh usually what would I, I use these pens the micron the sakura micron pen so I drew over the line art um to make it more prominent again and then I did a bit of shading with grays to make them look like tattoos I really like how that turned out a lot of people are bothered with um, Hannah Carlson's uh, portraits. They don't enjoy it as much because of, you know, the piercings or the nose piercings and the tattoos or dots on the face. I don't mind them. I actually like, I take them on as a challenge and I quite like playing around with them. All right. Then the next one I have is this one. So another uh, distressing background. Um and trying to get a bit bolder with my backgrounds and I covered up the black lines of the flowers which I really like for this particular page I don't do it for all my pages but I did like it for this I really found this a very cute page and I love the vibrancy of the pink bird the gold with it and yeah the colors work really nicely when I look at this page I think it's quite nice and vibrant but then to me my mice look a little bit dull um but that might have been also because i did not really know how to do fur yet but yeah i think the rest of the illustration is really nice and i feel like there was one more is it in this book yeah this one <laughs> all right so this one was my albrecht Dura pencils for the background but i think i, I tried i was just trying to add the little dabs of like metallic paint in the background as well um i feel like this might have I don't know actually I was going to say it might have been a color palette uh, color along or something like that but I'm not sure I, I don't do such limited color palettes anymore which is a shame because they look really nice um, they have quite an impact when they when you limit your colors but yeah I just use my my pencils and that's about it yeah and that's it um, in that book that's Hannah Carlson's Summer Nights then we have Magical Dawn. This was the second Hannah Carlson book I got. And I've done quite a lot in it because there is a colour along that has been going on for quite a while uh, by Barbara Colour on Instagram. And she has a YouTube channel. Her colour is colouring is amazing, beautiful, um, outstanding colouring. And she has a colour along on um, doing pages from this book. So I think her and maybe a group of people choose a page in this particular book for every month to color and um, I used to be able to keep up with it but now I can't just not enough time um, but I used to and so I've done quite a few pages in this book which so that used to help me but um, yeah so I've done this page this was just me playing around I think I was playing around with my uh, Tombow Jewel brush pens and my pencils and trying to use little jar pens and things like that so I was just playing around on that page in the beginning of my coloring I would just use any ordinary page to do my um testing so I was just testing distressings there this is one of very few if I have any other um name page nameplate pages that I've colored um I will eventually color others but uh yeah this is the only one I feel like I can remember coloring background I've done with Tombow Jewel brush pen, a black Tombow Jewel brush pen, and then um, Albert Jura pencils, some white Posca, metal, metallic gel pens, and that's it. I, I was really proud of this when I did it. Now when I look at it, I can tell it's one of my earlier pages, but yeah. 
and distressing sorry there this page I was really I really liked um I did new color twos for the background I love how I did the gradient going from dark to light at the top usually I go from dark on the outside going light into the center but uh, I like how I changed that up a little bit there and again I did that tattoo effect I like that um I think the reason I do that is because I don't know what colors to add to the tattoos when we have so much other color going on. So I tend to just keep it as black and uh, just black and white ink, basically, or just black ink um, tattoos. So, yeah, but I like I think it looks nice. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to think anything else. Just my Albert Dura pencils, really, and a bit of a sprinkling of Windsor and Newton ink and my regular glitter gel pens. And that's it. Metallic gel pens. I really like it. I like the colours I chose. And oh yes, and uh, this um, on this page the clothing was just straight. So all these pleats in there I added myself. I remember that now. Um, so yeah, I just sort of kept it like as if um, there were pleats there. That wasn't there on the um, original illustrations. So I added that one myself. So yeah, like I said, experimenting, <laughs> trying things out in these pages. All right, this one, background with my Albert Dura pencils and the foreground. Again, such a limited color palette, um, almost monochromatic, but um, yeah, don't know how I got inspired to do that, whether I was following a color along for certain colors or something that inspired me to do it. Um, but yeah, I barely do that these days. I really should try. Um, and yeah, that's it really, glitter gel pen. So just my pencils and a bit of embellishments on that page. Again, quite an early page, you can tell from the Distress Ink work, but yeah, I've used Distress Ink for the background and then Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing the dress, I think I remember, and then my Albert Jewel pencils. And I have glitter gel pen for that little string there. And that's it, again, a very limited palette. I like it. I like how I've added the dots there to give a bit of an effect for the dress. And obviously here at this point, I was still, oh, this is just 2020. I started coloring in 2020. I was gonna say I have Posca white pen, but I hadn't covered up the white, the black lines for white objects on the page, uh, which nowadays for white objects, I would usually do. So yeah, now if I was to color this page, I would definitely, if I'm doing a white ribbon, try and cover it up, um, cover up the lines to help with the element looking white. This was a very, very early page, isn't it? September 2020, yeah. So background with Albert Dura pencils. I've come a long way with my Albert Duras, but um, yeah, blending is not very good. Um, I remember being really proud of my gold bird, but nowadays I never use that combination. It looks more yellow to me than gold, um, but yeah. Um, it's nice memories, nice looking back at early work. I have some glitter gel pins, tiny glitter gel pin work there. But that's it really. Nothing much else um, other than my pencils. This one I did in 2022. This was for the support Hannah Carlson hashtag that, that was going around on Instagram when we heard the sad news about Hannah Carlson's uh, illness and um, yeah in support of that I decided to color this page I was away from home at that time I was in Kenya actually and I'd only taken five books with me and limited supplies so I used my back I used my Albert Dura pencils for the background um, really like how the effect turned out it looks like watercolor paint um, which is what I really like about my Albert Duras. they're so versatile because the foreground is done with my Albert Duras as well so I, I just love these pencils because of the effects you can get with them. Um, I like how my gemstone turned out. Um, and then I did a bit of sprinkling of Arteza metallic paint and I have some glitter gel pens and that's it really. Um, I loved coloring this page. I like the color. Oh yes, the color palette. I used a color palette that Fane on Instagram had shared and she said, um, people are more than welcome to use the color palette and that's how I got this color palette otherwise it's not something that I would be able to usually come up with because I go for very bright colors usually um so yes I'd use that color palette 
um, to do this page. I remember that. I've always looked through all these uh, Hannah Carlson books and I've picked pages over and over again, just never got around to coloring them. This I'd done on the same trip to Kenya actually, and I tried to cover up, I'd done the background um, at home, so in, in England, before I, I had traveled. So I'd use Neocolor 2s for the background. And then I tried to cover up all the line art with um, Windsor and Newton white ink, because I see some colorists do that and their work turns out amazing. And so I did try to do that. I think it works, it gives more of a painterly effect, um, but it was just an additional step to to make me an even slower colorist and so um yeah i probably wouldn't cover up the black lines of an entire page again um unless i was i just really wanted that effect um but i wouldn't do it for every page it really slowed down the process for me um but yeah i liked that um how i colored it the color combinations are a little bit different for me again um but it's nice enjoyed that Oh, this page was an experiment and I think it worked wonderfully. I, it wasn't working, but then it worked. So basically what I tried to do here is I've used Distress Ink for the background first and I put the Distress Ink on um, a clear uh, plastic um, paper folder. You know, the you, you put in your folders and you put a, a piece of paper in it, the plastic, uh, the ones you put in binders. Um, and so basically what I did is I just put the Distress Ink on that and then I sprayed it with water and I just then literally turned over that page onto this page. Now, obviously before I did that, I used drawing gum to cover up the line art because there wasn't that much line art to cover. That's probably why I got the, um, the um, brave, I was brave enough to try it. Sorry, I'm really stuck for words today, but I had the brave, I was brave enough to try it, but I covered up all the line art with drawing gum. Then I did turn that page over and left the uh, distressing on there. I didn't think that maybe it will bleed through because it was so much water, but luckily it didn't. I'm so glad. Good paper, good quality books. I don't know if it would be the same in the newer books because I feel the newer books are, the paper is a bit thinner than they used to be. Um, but yeah, so I did that. So I got that sort of pinkish effect. I was not expecting that. I was just expecting a more watercolor effect, but I'd use these kind of reds, the dark reds, and I didn't get that color. I got the pink color. So then I was like, okay, that's not the look I was going for. I was going for more of a rustic look. Um, so then I just went in with my Distress Inks and I started working on the edges uh, with some, I think it's walnut stain, so a brown one. Worked with the red again and uh, I loved the look then. And then I just went in and did blobs of these metallic watercolor. Again, Arteza, I didn't have any other metallic watercolor paints at the time. So Arteza, metallic watercolor paints. And um, I just did blobs of that. And then, yeah, I went ahead, did the coloring and uh, used Windsor and Newton white ink to finish it off and Posca white pen. And I love how it turned out. Not something I've reproduced again because I feel like it was um, a bit gung-ho of me. Like the fact that I didn't even think that maybe I'll ruin my next page, which is an absolutely beautiful illustration. But um, yeah. I really liked experimenting that day um, and maybe because there's not too much line art to cover up here again I I don't know I might try and reproduce it but I don't want to ruin this page but we know it doesn't get ruined but anyways so yeah really had fun doing that page and just playing um, I do have a how I color video for gold um, because I've used slightly different gold effects for these three I don't know if you can really tell um, but yeah, I do have a how I color video on the gold, um, and I share the combinations with you guys. And I really like how I did the shadows underneath the keys to make them look like they're popping off the page. Hopefully that shows on, on screen. Yeah, like this one, you can see it a bit better. Maybe I needed to leave a bit more of a gap there, but, um, yeah, it looks like the keys are sort of popping off the page. So I really like, I remember really enjoying coloring that page. This I've only done a background. I'd sort of prepared it for when I traveled to Kenya that one time because I wasn't taking all my coloring supplies with me, just hadn't got around to coloring it. Uh, distress inks and a water splash effect. 
and it's, it should be such a quick page to color but I, I have like some I, an idea of a color palette but now when I'm looking at it I really don't like it so I'm really gonna have to think about how I'm what I'm going to do for that uh, for that page this was quite an early one um the background I've done with my pencils, but I followed a tutorial by Katrine from Always Coloring. Um, sadly, she has passed away a few years ago, um, but she had a really good uh, tutorial on how to do this sort of uh, bubble or circle effect with halo around it. And I think she did it in The Flower Year by Layla Dooley um, with a bird illustration. That's what I remember. And uh, yeah, so I had followed that for, for this particular page. And then, yeah, the rest is just my pencils, um, my paint, uh, Posca white pen, and that's it, really. Um, I like, oh, and I think I tried to learn how to do pearls. I don't do that that often. It's not very easy, but I tried to, try to um, make the effect of a pearl there. Oh, this page I really like. I like the fact that, again, I haven't filled up the whole background and I've just kept some um, on the edges and I used distress inks and I did the water splash effect and then the rest of the work is Tombow Jewel brush pen with um, pencil. And again, same thing for the tattoos. I think I always do that. I don't always go in and shade. I probably should because I really liked that shading effect I did on that first illustration, that first portrait I showed you. But yeah. Um, there's nothing else actually yeah let's drop in again really like that page i have a lot of work to do for for portraits i i, I don't know how to color skin too well i still need to practice and learn how to do skin uh this is a very early page distress ink just one color distress ink but really not blended well there's no highlight area there's no darker area um but i remember thoroughly enjoying myself genuinely like after I finished this page I was so proud of it but now when I look at it again I can tell it's a very early page um tombow jewel brush pens and again my pencils September 2020 and I think I'd started coloring in is it March or May or something like that I can't remember of 2020 but yeah I remember being so proud of this page I feel like I'd put oh maybe not I don't know why I feel like I remember putting Windsor a uh, wink of Stella, but I it doesn't even feel like it's theirs. I don't think so. Yeah, this is another black background, and um, yeah, I've used my Tombow Jewel brush pens. I think. I'm trying to. Oh, is it? No, it's not. Uh, it's um acrylic, so it's black acrylic, and um. No, it's Posca, sorry. It's Posca pen, uh, black Posca paint pen. Because I'm looking at the streaks and I'm thinking, oh, that, that can't be uh, the acrylic. Yeah, I think it was Posca paint pen. And then, um, yeah, I really like how I've done the foreground. I can't really remember how I how I did that, but I like the, the sky I've done. Um, yeah. Simple coloring, but, but pretty. <laughs> Again, more experimenting. Here I'm playing around with my Tombow Jewel brush pens. The background is all Tombow Jewel brush pen off a palette. So I would have maybe taken two colors and then just with my paintbrush, just dab, dab, dab. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think doing backgrounds, which you don't cover up the whole background is usually a little bit more, makes your illustration pop a little bit more than covering up the entire background with especially a very bright background. Um, but yeah. I think pink and green always work, don't they? Again, a very limited color palette. I feel like this page would have been um, one of Barbara Color's choices. Some of them, well, I should have pointed them out, but I can't remember all of them now. But this one was, I think. I like the choices I've done. I'm not very good at using grays, I, I've, I've noticed. It looks, whenever I use gray, it looks quite flat. So if you have any, any advice, please do. Mention it in the comments below about using greys for, for buildings and things like that, but make it look a little bit more alive than, than that. That looks so dull to me. All right. 
And then this page I remember loving. I think again, I've done this for a Barbara Color uh, page, the, a chosen page. I did the background with distress inks, um, did a water splash, so I must have covered this bottom bit and then done the water splash effect for the top. And then, um, yeah, my pencils and some metallic gel pens and white Posca pen, and that's it. I really like looking at back at my old work because I feel like when I look at them I remember coloring them I remember being free when I'm coloring them and just feel like I had all the time in the world I guess I wasn't working at that time so um, I didn't have work and my son was very very young when was that 2021 so he would have been one years old um, so yeah uh, i had a lot of time at, at that time um so i remember being really free with my coloring all right then this page i used neo color twos for the background for that back part of the background too and then my pencils and i used a lot of i think windsor and newton white ink i feel like this is a color along on the channel so you can check it out check uh, under which one was this magical dawn sorry um and the Magical Dawn playlist. I feel like I did this as a color along. But yeah, I did the water splash effect with the Windsor and Newton white ink. And I wanted to look like I wanted it to look like crashing waves. Before it was all just, you know, the black line art, like she does her hair, for example. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I also covered up the line art, all the lines in the hair, and then colored in um, so that it looked a bit more realistic rather than you know how she has um I'm not gonna, yeah all the lines in her in her hair so I'd covered that up and um, yeah all the lines which were in the water I've covered up with the Windsor and Newton white ink to make it look like crashing waves I like how that turned out nice experimenting again then this one is distressing for the background water splash effect again quite an early page um, I love the colors I've chosen for the shell I really like how that shell turned out I think this was a page again chosen by Barbara color otherwise it's not a page I would naturally pick, which is really good about these color rollongs, like I said. Um, so the ones which specifically pick a page for you, it just makes you color a page that you may not have picked for a very long time um, or ever if you didn't finish your book. Um, so it was really nice doing those color rollongs. Yeah, this page I yeah did with my Albert Dura pencils. I've done a how I color video for the background to show you how I use my Albert Durer pencils for backgrounds to create sort of the watercolor effect, like as if you're using watercolor paints. And then the foreground is uh, Tom Borgio brush pens and my pencils and glitter gel pens and a sprinkling of Arteza metallic watercolor paint. Yeah, I really like coloring that. Another very limited color palette. But yeah, check out that How I Color video. If you, if you if you have Albert Durer pencils and they're stuck on how to use them for backgrounds, it's really nice trying to create that watercolor effect. Um, and it's a bit more forgiving with regards to what papers you can do it on then. So once you learn the effect, because you don't need to use as much water to activate the pencils as you probably would use with watercolor paints. So um, you can use them for backgrounds in a lot more variety of paper quality. Uh, books and then this is the final one this one was definitely a Barbara color color along page because again it's not a page I would naturally choose to color uh, background is with my Albert Durer pencils and I've done a bit of dabbing of like Windsor in a wink of Stella at that time uh, which has looks like it's rubbed off I can't see that much of a shine just little blobs everywhere I like how I did my gemstone and yeah limited color palette again i don't know if this does do the colors go i know the gold and purple goes nicely but yeah um that's it lots of pages in that book so hannah Carlson's magical dawn if only i'd carried on following those color that that hashtag on instagram i would have, i would have done a lot more pages but because it takes me long to finish one page now i can't stick to the idea of doing one page in a particular book every single month. It just doesn't happen. I wouldn't get round to all my books. All right. This was the first Hannah Carlson book I got. Hannah Carlson's Seasons. And I love this book. And I've done a lot in it because it was my first one. Um, hate that I had done testing. But um, yeah, I didn't know otherwise yet. Okay. 
So this is from last year, actually, one year ago, playing around with watercolour paints, wanting to learn how to play with them, but not watching any videos to, to figure them out. I just went in and decided to do it. I like that it's quite vibrant, um, but yeah, the, the watercolour paint skills is definitely not there on this page. Use a bit of metallic paint as well, I think. And uh, pencil is my Albert Dura pencils. These are early, <laughs> early pages. Again, background with Albert Dura's. My Albert Dura backgrounds are a lot different now, more vibrant. Um, this looks quite washed out to me. I don't know if it shows on, on screen as well, but it's very washed out. Um, and then I feel like I might have used Tombow Drill brush pens for basing the background and then just went over with the pencils. I haven't used that combination for gold for a long time. I don't know if I remember it. All right, and then this again, background is with my Albert Dura pencils. So I would have colored it in and then uh, activated it with water. And then I feel like I may have either just done lines or taken it off a palette and done lines on, directly onto the paper. The icicles I tried to make look like they're see-through um, in a way, not entirely because I didn't obviously fill up the bird um, behind the icicles. And I feel like I remember using Again, Wink of Stella, yeah, there's an ever so slight shine, but it's not as shiny as it was when I first applied it um, on all the crystals. A lot of white Posca paint pen. This one is a bit more of a later one. And I love how this page turned out because for some reason, even though it's such a simple page, my eye always used to get drawn to this page, but I always used to put it off saying that there's the main element is a bottle and I don't know how to do glass very well and I'm going to ruin the page and all of that. And so I never got around to doing it. And then finally, I picked up the courage and I did it um, in 2022. And I love how it turned out. Background is with distressing uh, water splash effect. I also created sort of like something like a surface for the bottles to lay on with distressings and then uh, pencil work and uh, Posca pen. Uh, Posca paint pen, white, and that's it, glitter gel pens, um, that's it, and I love how it turned out, I'm really glad I did it, I love that green that I've used, the vibrant sort of lime green, this is an early page, background with Arbor pencils again, not blended well, activated with water, but not blended very well, like, I don't know what I'm doing with those pink spots there, but I feel like I got inspiration for this page from Peter Hewitt's channel. Now, I don't know if she had a colour along or she had it as a completed page. And I just got inspiration from that page. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like she might have had a colour along. Um, but yeah, I think I, I followed that. So definitely not my... I don't know about the background. I don't think she could have done a background like that. So I may have just done my own background. But the rest of it, I feel like I remember getting ideas from her for that okay um again Albert Dura pencils for the background activated with water um and that's it pencils Busca paint pen this one I did a Tombow Jewel brush pen um background um for the black and then my pen uh, my pencils sorry Again, I feel like I must have, this is 2020, so July 2020, right at the beginning of my colouring. So I must have got inspiration from somewhere to create that sort of attempt to create a, a mirror effect. Um, so Pinterest or something like that. I would not remember, unfortunately, because um, at that time I didn't think I would have Instagram or YouTube or anything. So I didn't make a note, unfortunately, of whose um, page I got inspiration from. So many pages in this book, I still want to colour. This is a book I actually would want to colour all the pages. Early, early page. Again, look at the background with my Arbitura pencils. Very different back uh, work with that. And I got inspiration. I'm not sure if I fully followed. Again, I can't remember. But um, Alina, colouring with Alina. Um, I followed her tutorial to do this. Yes must have because I wouldn't have known to do a flower like that with those blends um so yeah beautiful book this book 
this one. Oh yes, this is a soft pastel background. I love soft pastels, guys. It's so easy to use and blend and get such a nice soft effect. But yeah, I did a background with soft pastels using a stencil to erase off the circles. And um, yeah, I think I added the pleats to the dress again myself. And she had, uh, I think, tattoos on the arm. Now, it, I wasn't sure if it's a sleeve or what it was. I decided to make it a full sleeve with sequins sort of effect. Um, so I turned the tattoos into just, I started dotting on it with a Posca paint pen to make it look like it's sequins on a, on a sleeve of a dress. So I really liked that idea. Um, and I feel like I've used this color combination again, probably inspiration from, yeah, from Coloring with Alina's page. Um, although this was a, bit, a lot later, but uh, yeah. I like that really like that page again I don't feel like it's very cohesive though I don't think the background works with the vibrancy of the yellows and oranges I've used on the page the purples are fine but I don't think the yellows and oranges work very well with the rest of the colors I've used they like they, they, they're taking your eyes away from everything else so it doesn't look um, balanced I don't think but it's overall I enjoyed coloring that this page I remember being very proud of. So background with artwork drawer pencils, activated with water. Love how that background turned out. And then I remember really working on my gemstones and my my um, strawberries. Oh, yes. I did a quick like uh, real video on um, Instagram. My very first video ever. And um, I did it on these strawberries, I think, of how to color strawberries. And... Um, but I, I may need to try and color strawberries again. I don't remember color. I, I haven't colored strawberries properly for a while. Um, but yeah, so I remember doing that for Instagram, not YouTube. And here I like um, Hannah Carlson's uh, work. Usually she has a lot of patterns. So it looks like as if it's a, you know, jewelry um, sort of on her insects. So that's what she had on these butterflies as well. I covered it up with Windsor and Newton white ink and tried to make the butterflies look a bit more realistic. So I really like that effect. I think it works well. Yes, you can see the line art sort of showing through, like in the orange area. So maybe I could have used a bit more Windsor and Newton white ink, but I think it works. It looks really good. And I must have followed a tutorial on how to do the butterflies with the veins showing. I was very proud of that. <laughs> I like the color choice of the, the flowers as well. They quite they pop out quite a lot. This was my very first portrait ever. <sighs> I don't know what I did to her chin, poor lady. Um, yeah, again, all Albert Juro pencils, even the background, quite dull the background. Um, don't know why I kept going for that sort of a color for the backgrounds. Where else did I do it? Did I do it here or in another? Oh yeah, there. So not sure why I kept going for that background. It was clearly not working. Um, but yeah, my first portrait. And I think I don't color, don't use these color combinations now, but I did learn a little bit about the shadowing and stuff from Peter Hewitt's channel. And I, I uh, applied that for this page. I don't think she showed it on this particular page, but she's very good at teaching. I wish she would come back and do videos. <laughs> All right. This one, again, Arbit Jury Pencils, activated for the background and the foreground. White paint pen. I like that. I do like that. This page, again, my Arbit Jury Pencils for the background, but I tried to sort of have a cloud effect, experimenting. I think I put this, the little moon there. It doesn't look much like a moon, but I tried. Um, but I love the vibrancy of the green and how the leaves turned out um so yeah really enjoyed that page i would love to color this page but it's the fur i still have to learn how to do fur <laughs> sorry i should probably get on with it i have a few more to show you in this book we're into the winter section um so we have this page so the background is distressing you can see the halo around all the elements um don't like how I did my light sources. I probably still don't know how to do light sources very well, 
Um, so that could have been better, but I don't mind the rest of it. It's good. My Albrecht Dura pencils, Tombow Dura brush pens for basing these leaves. I'll try to do some light uh, reflections. And then I use a lot of Posca white pen to look, make it look like they settled snow. I do that a little bit differently now, which you might see in this book actually. Yeah, here. So I do my settled snow effect a little bit more exaggerated than it is here. These just look like little dots, whereas this looks like actual snow dripping off a surface. Um, so yeah, that's a very recent page. Uh, one year ago, I do have a full colour along available on the channel for this. I did do a distressing background. I used drawing gum for covering up the line art. I didn't want the distressing to go on. And um, love how the snow turned out. Love that I've used so many different colours in the snow and yet it looks like snow. And... Um, yeah, still don't like my light. So that is how many years later? So that was in 2020 and that's 2023 and I still haven't figured out light sourcing. Um, but yeah, I love how this page turned out. And I have started using two leaf art paint pens at this point. So I cover up black lines a lot and I used it for the fur, which helps with um, making that look a little bit better. Um, sprinkling of Windsor and Newton White Ink. I love this page. But yeah, there's a colour along up on the channel for that one. Again, very early page, experimenting with backgrounds. Um, Albert Dura pencils activated with water. Tombow Dura brush pens for basing all the leaves. Um, the pine needle, pine, is it a pine tree? And then um, my Albert Dura pencils. And that's it. And I think... That's all I had in this book. Yeah. So this was the most recent one, and I love how that page turned out. But at least I've done quite a few in that book. Um, Hannah Carlson's Seasons. Okay, two to go, and then we'll be done. And these don't have that many pages. So Hannah Carlson's Jewelry Box. I feel like I'm losing my voice as well. Oh, yes, this page. The bright yellow background. I don't know what got into me to want to do a bright yellow background, but I'm glad I did. I think it looks great. I think it was Neo Color 2s for the background. And then, yeah, I just went for it really. Um, I love how it turned out and I love that I made the crystals a totally different color so it pops off the page. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I like looking at this page. It makes me happy. Um, but yeah, Arbitura pencils. This one is a distressing background with attempted water splash effect. I don't know why it doesn't look very... Um, I feel like I remember it going through a bit, but no, it doesn't show now. Um, so yeah, water splash effect and then my pencils. I like it. It's nice. I try to go for like a vintage sort of look with the colours. This one you guys have just seen. And... You've seen it over and over again until I just finished it um, in March. Um, but this is a watercolour paint background, finally. Um, I love how that turned out. I don't know if I can reproduce it. I was just playing and it worked, I think. I used some metallic paint from Lightwish, a white one and gold, uh, which I have shared a review of on the channel. And then some of the, the, the flowers and some of these lighter leaves were done with Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils and then the rest is done with my Albert Durers. And the fur I think looks a bit better on this particular page but I kept putting it off at the end because I left the deer till the end. I'd done the leaves, the flowers, the background, everything. And then I had to tackle the fur and I was just like, I have no idea how to do it. I'm going to ruin my page after all this effort. and. Um, and it's been a whip for so long, but I'm glad it turned out okay. A bit of a wrinkly page, so I've not done a proper watercolour background before. It's not bending over or anything, but it has wrinkled this side of the page. So I I have kept it in my bookshop for a bit, and I thought it would flatten it out. But I think, I mean, before I colour this page here, I'm going to um, have to iron it. Iron it out so it's a bit flatter when I'm coming to colour it. Um, because I don't think I'll enjoy colouring over a bumpy surface but yeah I love how that page turned out and I'm so glad I actually finished it finally it was a whip for so long um and then I think this is the last page in this book yeah Albert Dura pencil background and 
and I'll break your pencil for grand. And uh, Windsor and Newton Whiting Sprinkling, I use a metallic watercolour paint sprinkling, and that's it. I love it. I really enjoyed colouring this page. I remember colouring this page and absolutely enjoying it. I love the colour of the background as well. Kind of Carl's own jewellery box. And the last book is Hannah Carlson's Spirit Animals. In this book, I don't get around to it as much and I do take my sweet time because I do do it as double page spreads. The, 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 because of it being spirit animals, the um, illustrations do look like a double page spread. You can color it as a single page, but I think they're related. So the colors I'm going to use for each page are basically going to match up. Um, if the illustration is not just a whole continuous one. So like these two are not a continuous illustration, but um, the theme is the same, spirit animals, the frogs to the witch. And um, so I'm going to use the same colours across the double spread. And so, yeah, this was the first one I think I did in this book. And I absolutely love it, actually. I did the background with my Arbor Dura pencils. So versatile, isn't it? And all the line art with my Arbor Dura pencils. And then some white paint pen work, Windsor and Newton white ink, and that's it. The same stuff over and over again, guys. <laughs> Probably bored of hearing me tell you what I'm using. But um, yeah, I had I didn't have that many supplies before. I didn't need um, additional supplies. As you can see, I could I, I just colour with my Albert Euro pencils, and they are plenty. All right, this again is my Albrecht Duro pencils for the background. I like that I've left um, sort of white paper in the middle, so a highlight in the middle. I like that effect and really dark around the edges of the paper. I used, um, I might have used Tom Bojo brush pen for basing, yeah, I think I did. And then my pen, Albrecht Duro pencils over the top, and I've used Arteza metallic. Uh, watercolour paint for sprinkling and gel pens glitter and metallic or just glitter and a lot of white paint pen to cover up the black lines and I feel like I might have a how I colour video on the white flowers yeah I like that page too I think I like all the pages I've done in this book like I said, I experiment a lot in Hannah Carlson's books, um, and this was another experiment, and I love how it turned out, actually. Um, so because we had a rainbow here, I just decided to go for a rainbow background. Neo Color 2s this time for the background, and then I used my pencils for the foreground. Again, on this page, for the unicorn's hair as well as the lady's hair, I did cover it up with Windsor & Newton white ink to cover up the black lines, and then I went over with the pencils just to take away that dark... Um, the dark black from the hair basically because I was using such pastel sort of colors um, yeah I really liked this and then for the rainbow I feel like I'd used some uh, Tom Bojo brush pen and then my pencils but I also used Windsor uh, Wink of Stella I keep saying Wins Wink of Stella over the top I can see ever so slight glitter but that's rubbed off again it's not it doesn't really stay and I remember this being a challenge. I tried to look it up on YouTube on how to color a horse or a unicorn, I think, to try and get some of those um, features of a horse's face um, on there. Um, otherwise, again, I wouldn't know that you should have some vein sort of effect there, the cheeks there. So, yeah, I remember trying to look that up a little bit. Um, and that's it, guys. That is my last page to show you. And I have picked out one for this spring, and I don't know if I'm going to get around to it. Um, I've not had the colouring mojo recently, the last uh, week, two weeks. But um, this page, and I don't have an idea yet. I don't have an idea yet. So I'm waiting to see if I get a bit of inspiration for that. But yeah, that's my completed Hannah Carlson pages since I started adult colouring. I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. It's turned out to be really long, even though I try not to make it long. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the series of seeing all my completed pages. I'm enjoying seeing all my older pages and seeing um, how I used to colour so early in my colouring journey. Um, so it's fun. It's fun seeing. And it's also fun seeing that I use the same 
supplies till today. So from the first day of colouring till today, I'm still using the same supplies and I absolutely love them. Um, but yeah, so that's my Hannah Carlson completed pages. So hopefully I'll be back with you guys soon. Since I'm doing hardbacks, maybe I'll be back with Maria Trolle, for example, on the next video uh, of this series. So until then, take care. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.